topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. She's passionate about telling stories of amazing women who are rocking the world and empowering women to live, love, and thrive. Here's your host, Katherine Gray. Hello, welcome to Live, Love, Thrive, your Women's Empowerment Hour brought to you by 360karma.com. Today, I am fortunate has won numerous awards and uh, is also features the uh, Emmy Award-winning song by Lady Gaga, which is Till It Happens to You. Uh, so later in the show, we're going to be talking to the producer, which is Amy Ziering, and right now we are going to talk to the co-producer, Nicole Ehrlich. Welcome, Nicole. Thank you, Kat. I love this. Thank you. I love your little gold yeah, frog. Good luck. Good luck mm-hmm. from yeah, from the folks that are that. gone. Yeah, frogs yeah. and ladybugs. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. So um, this Lady Gaga music video that you uh, produced uh, <coughs> won an Emmy. The song won an Emmy. Till it happens to you, and I have to say, um, I know it has a gazillion views on uh, YouTube, uh, as it should just the very topic of it. Um, it's so so important uh, that we get this message out here uh, about rape on college campuses, which is what it's about. And uh, it, it, it's such a tough dis, you know topic to even discuss. Um, I can't imagine, you know, I've watched the video and it's really it's it's hard to watch um, because it's so, it, it, it hits home for so many people and and I know you even told me that you have a personal uh, story that uh, pertains to this subject matter and so I was wondering if you could share that with us and what it was like to work on this film it, it sure. must have been tough to to uh, broach this subject especially when it's personal to you sure I, I actually never spoke about my incident to anyone before I started working on the film with um, Amy and Paul, Paul Blavin. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing to me that so many people who came together on this to to make this come to light in some sort of way, I mean, Amy pioneering this with Kirby, Mm -hmm. um, but so many people had similar instances that I had. I went to Tulane straight out of college, straight out of high school. And And, and you were like, like, a straight A student, prom queen. I mean, your dream was to go to Tulane. You shared this with me. Yeah, I, right. I, I definitely, I was president of yeah, my class. Yeah. I, I love. I want everybody to do great yeah. and have all their dreams come true, as as I still do. Right. And I work my whole life, you know, with my parents' support and my grandparents, my family, my whole life to go to Tulane you know I had some of my friends going there we had the same sorority that we were going to join and some of my friend's sisters were there and I was so excited to like start my journey now into my I guess adulthood yeah right right and um and while I was there it was my first year Mm -hmm. and I was doing great I I was having the best time I was doing good in school and then oh my god I can't even talk about it I think this is the first time I'm actually talking about it right in public in public yeah um and then I had an incident in one of the dorm rooms with uh, one of the fraternities and instead of confronting the situation Mm -hmm. um I guess you can say I, I I maybe I didn't want to ruin their lives, like they just ruined mine, which I thought, so I left school. My parents picked me up. They were really supportive, they knew. Mm -hmm. And I transferred to Smith College, right? which was unbelievable for me. You gave up your dream, though, to go to Tulane because of this incident. I mean, it, it, it really did derail that dream and changed it, even though it ended up, I know you, uh, oh. I know you enjoyed attending Smith College, right? Oh yeah, that yeah. changed my life. Yeah, that changed yeah. your life. But in in the same token, uh, it, it wasn't what you had in mind, and it's a terrible reason that you had to leave, or, or so you felt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I definitely would have done things differently mm-hmm. if I had the knowledge of and the support of maybe a 
broader community. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel what this film is doing. Right. Um, Because otherwise you feel like it just happened to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And and then I, yeah. I mean, I felt it was very powerful when I saw uh, Gaga perform at the uh, Oscars last year, the song with those 50 or so women uh, yeah, it that it had all happened to them. And, and they sang uh, till it happens to you. And I think women all over the world saw that and thought, oh, my God, I'm not alone. There's a amazing. lot of us. And it's sad yeah. that there's a lot. Uh, that's yeah. the sad part. Julie uh, Smolansky, she was one of the executive producers, and she's an right. unbelievable. Right, I had her on the show yeah, recently. you did. So yeah. wonderful. She's uh, amazing. C- the youngest CEO, female pioneer. CEO in the country yeah, for a publicly pioneer. traded company. Yeah. But it happened to her. It could happen to anybody. She was on the stage for that. She she joined in on that, which I was saw, amazing. Yeah, I, know, I saw Super that. Super courageous and brave. Very courageous, too to come to terms with that. I, I assume it uh, makes you feel empowered, though, to talk about it and not keep it, you know, uh, you know, behind closed doors? Um, I, I, f- I feel if this is helping somebody by talking about it, right. I am proud to say I'm here for you. and. Right. And you can still what, go on and can, have a, f- in, a productive, fabulous life. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So don't let you it take you down. Yeah. Don't, right. Don't let it. T- you can get o- if you can get over something like that, you can get over anything. Right. And the, I think the great thing, just to bring it back to the video, was that you're right. It was a hard topic for people to talk about and still is. And um, pol- politicians to talk about mm-hmm. um, heads of colleges or, you know, the, the people who are making, you know, um, decisions about how to to deal with situations. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like the video added a l- eyeballs that possibly the film may have never seen. And now I think a lot of the people who have seen the video feel differently. Feel differently. And Be- the very yeah. essence of the song, Till It Happens to You, it's so true. Uh, Unless it's happened to you, there's really no way you could identify with it. But I think that's what you brought out in the film, is helping people almost step into the shoes of people. And and, and, and the film uh, itself, uh, The Hunting Ground, uh, is a beautiful uh, film to make people understand how it feels to be that victim. And and it doesn't have to just be or survivor. It doesn't just have to be about campus assault. It right. could be about anything, right? What, whatever it is in life, till it happens to you, right? Like, anything in life you can't identify with unless you've been through it yourself. And yet, we need to have compassion for people that have been through things that we have not. Absolutely, compassion is mm-hmm. is a yeah. huge part of everything. Because there are people out there uh, that will say, "Oh, that, that person uh, deserved that, or asked for that, or they were drunk, or they were what." There are people the power that will say, of "Positivity." Yeah, that this person, uh, you know, uh, per- somehow uh, uh, was responsible for it. I mean, that that's how people are made to feel. I think, and I mean, mm-hmm. let's be real. That is how some people make people feel. And yet, we both know, and we should all know, that no one deserves that under any circumstances. And many times, people are given a Spanish fly, or they're given, uh, or they're just there. There's no alcohol involved. Uh, but even if there is, there it still doesn't give anyone the right to take that liberty. And so. I feel like this is a conversation that we needs to uh, become broader and broader. I'm so glad that on the uh, Oscars last year, Joe Biden talked about how we need to raise our sons to respect women and and to call out fraternity brothers who are doing things that uh, of this nature and instead of keeping silent. They need to stand up and call them out. So we need the men to support this. And in fact, this I know happens to men as well, not just women. Um, so it, it, it's such an important film. It's such an important song. Uh, it's it's such an important movement to change this. And it probably seems so monumental to, to change it, but it really starts with uh, something like this. It starts with a film. It starts with changing legislation. It starts with changing the way we bring up our children wouldn't you agree absolutely yeah Yeah. i know you have two boys right i have two boys yeah absolutely 
teach them to be leaders, not followers. And mm-hmm. if they're following something, it better be respectful. Mm-hmm. And yeah, to put life on a pedestal, everyone's right. life, not just their own, not just in their circle, right? but people in other countries. And, you know, right. the person right next to you that, yeah. you know, is sitting next to you, you know, while you're, while you're waiting for, you know, your food to come to the table. Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, I was doing a meditation today is about treating people, uh, you know, treating people like you want to be treated. And where it seems so simple, that statement, and so overused, the bottom line is if everyone in the world would do that, always treat other people the way they want it to be treated. Men treat women the way they want to be treated. They treat children the way we want to be treated. Everyone, if everyone would treat everyone the way they personally want it to be treated, wouldn't the world be a better place? Right? Absolutely. Right. It seems so simple. But, yeah. you know, uh, I think it's films like this and uh, the music uh, that helps uh, change the way we look at things and realize. Like you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, we need platforms to tell these stories of amazing women like you and Amy that are um, help making a difference. And I, I think every, uh, and, and because I talk specifically on this show really to women's empowerment, it is about trying to get us uh, to help each other and, and, and mentoring or whatever things. I, I know you're such a big advocate of helping other women. And uh, that's why we're honoring you at the Live, Love, Thrive conference coming up, Thank a you. 360 Karma Women Award. You Thank know, you so I'm much. my whole uh, ideology behind 360 Karma Women is uh, that women – Uh, once you've been successful and you have the opportunity to help other people that we do need to give back and so I always like to showcase women like you and Amy that are giving back and uh, that's such an important message that we need to put out there and that to not sit on the sidelines but to get into the game and do something to make a difference Uh, whether it's in your career or if it's just uh, you know volunteering or whatever it is but making sure that we tap into that purpose of why we're here and that calling uh, that that makes a difference why we're here to leave some type of legacy leave the world off a little bit better than we found it Absolutely. and and that's what you guys are doing with this film it's shedding a lot of light and uh, it, like I said, it was great to see it uh, performed on the Oscars. I'm so glad that it won an Emmy. I'm so glad that uh, a lot of people are getting behind it. Um, I think it won an Emmy, and it has so many views because so many people relate to this. And um, they're like, yes, somebody's finally doing something to shout uh, from the rooftops about it. Like, we're not going to stand for this anymore. I think that's the one good thing that's come out of the elections, and that's all I'm going to say about the elections, <laughs> uh, is that... I think it's got women uh, talking about we're not going to stand for not being respected. We're not going to stand for not being able to move up into positions of influence. And I think personally, uh, we need a leader in the United States of America, whether it's a man or woman, that respects women because that sends a message all around the world that the leader of this country respects women. I agree. I'm with her. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, I know you grew up in a culture of um, artists, you know. Your grandmother was a painter, yes? Yeah, my grandmother was a painter. My father went to art school. Mm -hmm. Um, My mother was, my mother and my grandfather, huge advocates of the arts and entertainment. Mm -hmm. They owned a gallery. And we we had season tickets to everything, the ballet, the opera. Even if my mom couldn't afford to put food on the table and we were eating McDonald's, we would be at the opera. Wow. It might have been in the back. Yeah. But we would be there. She were there. Yeah. It was a priority. We'd, yeah, we'd be at every museum opening. My mom, you know, brought me to the Elizabeth Sackler Center where we both became um, trustees and founders. And uh, w- with her on that project, when it opened within the Brooklyn Museum, and um, it definitely brought light to a lot of issues mm-hmm. where, you know, there are only only 5% of art hanging in major museums, maybe not even major museums, and museums in general, mm-hmm. are made by women, when over 51% of art is made by women. Right. And that number is yeah. astonishing. Well, that goes that, across all that, sectors. It I mean, does. It yeah, does. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Whether it's tech but or this science. Is, but or, I'm saying this yeah. isn't tech. 
And yeah. this is inside. Yeah, this is art. This yeah. is art, yeah. right? So it's even happening in... Um, the arts. The arts. Yeah. Or in the entertainment industry. I know it's been a tough ride for you. Uh, you know, being a woman in the entertainment industry is not easy. Uh, you, you had, you know, we talked a little bit about it, it was a little easier for you being a gay woman that uh, you were kind of one of the boys is what you yeah, shared identifying, with me. Identifying yeah. um, as a lesbian, as a big dyke. Yeah. You know, as the vice president of Universal Music Group, mm -hmm. you know, for over 10 years, definitely made it easier to have my opinions listened to mm -hmm. and um, respected. Mm -hmm. uh, other than other women where we I, I believe that I, I hope that the other women in at Universal, Interscope, Geffen, A&M, DreamWorks, you know, the whole umbrella where I was at. I hope they know how much I I was there for them. They mm -hmm. said something I'd make sure that they were raised up and, mm -hmm. and heard. And Your advocate. I for sure heard them. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to be, you know, brought on by Grace Miguel, who is an, an, an extraordinary woman, always supporting women. Polly Anthony, who uh, was the president. I went through seven presidents while I was there. So she was one of the seven. But she was definitely one of the most fabulous. Mm -hmm. and, and the rest were all men. The rest were all men. Yeah. They were, there, there were many great ones there mm -hmm. as well. But... Yeah. She was uh, phenomenal. Right, right. Phenomenal. But well, uh, and, and you enjoyed uh, that run working with uh, yeah. Universal? Yeah, yeah, I did. I think right now in my life it's about giving back. Right. That's a, Yeah, you get to I a certain do, age in your back. life, right, where you say, everything I, I do I want to make a difference, you know, and have it, it mean it something. I really do. Yeah. You know, I've been trying to do that in my work over the years by making mm -hmm. things relatable, whether mm -hmm. it created an emotion of sadness or hate or love or yeah. whatever someone was feeling. If you look back on any of the videos or the, I call them mini movies or stories throughout you mm -hmm. know, my career working with artists, I always try to evoke an emotion that somebody mm -hmm. could relate to. Yeah. And it, they could sit with that piece yeah. and just realize that right. it, it's not just them, that other right. people have felt this and feel this, sure. and you're going to get through it. How did Lady Gaga feel about the uh, video you produced about uh, Till It Happens to You? Um, I, be I believe, I, I never like talking for anybody, Yeah, but I believe that uh, she loved it. And yeah, and very moved. Appreciate it. Yeah. And was moved. I mean, um, I, I, I love that she... She is an advocate for people. I love that she created the Born This Way, that she's got this, uh, that she aligned with you guys on this project. Um, she's super inspirational. Yeah. She definitely, I think we're at the, in the, we're always at the same frontier of creating a paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. I mean, in lots of different ways in, you know in the LGBT community, in the women's movement, it, mm -hmm. whether you want to be a stay-at-home mom or you, whether right. you want to work, whatever your choice is, that's right. okay. Right. You know, it's just about choice and equality. Right. Um, and, yeah, so I definitely always applaud her. I love working with her. She's inspirational. I, you know, I, I never get bored when I'm when I'm <laughs> Yeah, I don't think her. you could get bored with yeah. her. <laughs> I do also, though, it's really important for me to support, yeah. you know, women who don't have these opportunities. Like sure. maybe someone like Millie Brown, who's this unbelievable artist who, right. you know, is developing. She came up under Nick Knight. She has worked with Gaga and I, and she's been in all the different museums all over the world. But she's a performance artist and how do performance artists make money when mm -hmm. meanwhile you're giving so much of yourself and right. sharing so much so i had her live with me for a year yeah. and she did her whole last collection there and and then you it wasn't that uh showcased at art basel in we, miami yeah, every year i do a celebration yeah. of women in art at art basel miami beach just yeah. to make sure that we are representing you know the women artists of our future. And that's really cool because that's a world-renowned, you know, happening. So yeah. that's really cool that you get behind that and, Thank you. and showcase women. Thank you so yeah. much. I mean, uh, I, I've known you a short time, and I just think you're just a real bright light. And that uh, you, you. Uh, really, you do. You, you give back. I can see that. I love that about you. And it's in your fiber. It's just who you are. And... Uh, I, I, what's next for you? What do you what, what do you have your eyes set on? Oh my gosh, I have so many things I want to <laughs> do. 
Any you uh, want right? to share? Um, I would love to share. I, there's one really important project that I'm doing. It's mm-hmm. out of New York City. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a startup company. I can't wait to share it with everybody. I think it will definitely, it will definitely improve the quality of life for lots of people. I'm doing it with Michael Klein. He started Fandango. Um, Alexandra Wilson is a part of it. She was, uh, she started Guilt and Glam Squad. I'm just really excited to make a difference in this sector. Mm-hmm. Something different for me, but I know it will change the quality of life for a lot of people. And is that like, uh, it sounds like it's a very positive direction. It's going to change yeah. it in a positive, positive. way, right? Yeah. yeah, only positive. Right. No, because it's hard to work on um, the, the the dark things that are happening, right? Even I mean, we have to shed light on them in order oh, to absolutely. make them change. Absolutely. But it is hard. You know, like I said, that was a it's a hard video to watch that you produced for the song. And uh, um, but I I know it'll uh, it's such an important thing. And I know it's such an uh, important to get that message out there as graphic as it was, as hard it is to watch. um, I know it was necessary. It's just um, I think I think one of the most important things coming from all of this and and wrapping everything in a bow is Mm -hmm. that women, men, especially women and women, We really need to support each other. We can't be afraid to ask each other for things. What's the worst that can happen? Someone says no. You you know, I'm a big proponent of this. Ask somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, following your dreams is so important. Even if you don't have the role models in your life to show you how to do that or that you're even worthy of that, you need to know that you are worthy and that if doors close, knock again. Right. Try again. Right. We I know my so first uh, my first documentary, I kept knocking on PBS's door <laughs> like three times. They're like, go away, go away. And then finally they called me, and <laughs> you know, because like finally we could, you know, gays could get married. And oh, now we want your film. And I'm like, I knew it. <laughs> yeah. So you're right, though. It is persistence pays off uh, and support pays off. Support, and it is friendship. Yeah. Relationships are yeah. the most important thing in the world. Right. And that's really wh- care about the people that you are building relationships with. Right. And women need to go out and join organizations and find their people, you know, that they feel comfortable with, whatever. I mean, there's so many women or- organizations. You know, I've created the Live, Love, Thrive community and our conference to bring people that are like minded, uh, that want to make a difference in the world. But there's so many out there, the National Association of Women Business Owners and, and uh, uh, you know, so, too many to mention, actually. But um, you know, that you can always find one that fits your needs. E Women Network, or you know, Absolute, Wow, or absolutely. Yeah. And people need need each other. We need each other's support, right? Even if right. you go to one one event, yeah. or it's it's nice to bring that ener- energy. Yeah. I would say say yes to everything. Yeah. That's yeah. my motto. Say yes yeah. to everything. Energy when I came out here to spreads. L.A., I knew no one. Mm-hmm. And I just said yes to everything. And uh, now people kid me. They call me the mayor that I know everybody. But it's know, not true. My, but I mind. do know a lot of people. But blow they, my mind. I said yes to everybody. And uh, don't get take that the wrong way. But <laughs> but I <laughs> but um, I do think it's saying yes <laughs> and, and letting the universe send those people to you and being open to it and, and uh and and then it'll uh, flow pretty easily if you just are open to yeah. it. Yeah, and, and have some have some tough skin also. Some people do have bad days. Yeah, and and give tough people skin. Spa- I don't have that. Give but. people space. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. And, and communicate. Were you having a tough day today? Like, yeah. why did you act like this toward me? Right, right. You Cut, know, cutting communi- them a little slack. Communicate yeah. with people, and then if they. You know, if they were just mean, then you know that's not the person that you you should be working with. Or, right, right. But I definitely um, believe that we as women need to be good to the women that we work with and that we're surrounded by m- helping them, mentoring them. Right. Patience. Right. Patience. We, we can really, we're half the population. Right, right. And uh, we should utilize that power, that we are power in numbers. and yes, that we, we have can, a voice. Yeah, we have a voice. If, if we would come together and use it and get behind each other. Uh, Madeline Albright said, uh, there's a special place in hell for women that don't help women. <laughs> remember that, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, remember that, ladies. <laughs> so um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, so uh, what, what is it that you'd like people to know? Um, let's say they would like to, to do what you're doing, producing uh, music videos. Um, how would one get started in that? What, what, what would be their first move? 
Uh, I would say making anything in life. Like, I just love to make things, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So if it's music videos or if it's Just go out and start doing it. Or if it's... You know, you if it's cooking, buy, yeah, buy some ingredients, cooking, but read uh, <laughs> some recipes. Yeah, I would say if it's music videos, it's go. I mean, go to shows, meet new artists, and right. and and surround to, yourself by those in that whatever it is you want to be doing. It, make an effort, yeah. Right. To want to be a writer, go to a writers group. If, yeah, yeah. go listen to some music, meet the artists that you that you like. Tell them you'll. You want to shoot something with them, um, go to film school, mm-hmm. educate yourself, or go to a production company and introduce yourself. Tell them you want to intern. I, love I that. always think you're never too good to do whatever. I'll yeah. still pick up trash on set and go get coffee. And well, good. On that note, could you go empty that garbage? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I would do anything for... Yeah for a project that I'm involved right, in. Right, Get in on the ground floor and then g- who knows what doors will open. People will recognize your talent. I know that Absolutely. happened to you. And know your worth. Yeah. Know, know your, your worth. worth. That's really important because sometimes yeah. women overdo it. Like yeah. they work for free forever. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I think you just need to communicate. Yeah. Look, this and is And that's what, a whole other one I've about done. equal pay and knowing oh, what you deserve. And Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you, babe. Give me a uh, kiss. Oh, you're, you're the, the best. best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be right back with Amy Ziering. Stay tuned. Do you want to have more passion and purpose in your day-to-day? Are you yearning to ignite your power within? Now, more than ever, the world needs women who dream big, inspire others, and are living their greater purpose. There's never been a better time to up your game and make your success happen now. Contact Danny Rukin for a complimentary consultation and find out more about how you can become more effective, energized, and empowered while making a difference in doing what you love. Go to www.dannyrukin.com. The Live, Love, Thrive radio show is produced by 360karma.com. Are you a 360 Karma woman? If so, spread the word. Be sure to follow us on social media at 360 Karma Women on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please like us and share us with family and friends. This is the year of the woman, and we are stronger together. The Live, Love, Thrive program is brought to you in part by Honda of downtown Los Angeles, supporting the equality and empowerment of women. Fans of the Live, Love, Thrive radio show, join us for our Live, Love, Thrive conference in Los Angeles on November 12, 2016. This will be one of the most dynamic and interactive conferences in the country regarding equal pay and the shift of putting more women into positions of influence. Plus, incredible speakers, music, and life-changing tools to help you find your life purpose and create your legacy. Get your tickets now at www.LiveLoveThriveConference.com. And we are back with Amy Ziering. Hi, Amy. How are you? Great. How are you? Good, good. So um, you are the producer of uh, The Hunting Ground, which is uh, a very poignant film about uh, rape on college campuses. Really rough subject. I know you've won a lot of awards for this film, and uh, being a documentary filmmaker myself, I know how much blood, sweat, and tears goes into a documentary. People have no idea. I I, I can't even imagine how long you've been working on this. Um, So uh, tell me, um, what was it that made you decide to cover this topic? and, And let me back up for just one second. I know I know your dad, you had shared with me that your dad uh, was a Holocaust survivor. And I'm just wondering if all these poignant films that you make, because you've made so many films that are so important that uh, are about trauma and and very moving things of this nature, um, if that in some way has influenced your wanting to tackle social justice and, and issues like this. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, we we sort of we, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, uh, my interest in, uh, I, I, I mean, it's kind of unconscious, but I think the reason why I sort of did gravitate towards doing things that try and help people is from my personal experiences with my father's experience. Right, right. And so uh, did you grow up uh, with him sharing uh, that with you? Uh, no, it's not something I usually talk about, and it's not something he ever talked about. Right. Okay. And so did you look at it and say, wow, this really had such an impact on this man that's my father that I love uh, that I want to do something? No, as to- I said, it was unconscious. I yeah. mean, I... I didn't know. I mean, it, it was only much later, actually. It was. Um, it wasn't until I think a year ago I was in Australia doing a press interview, mm-hmm. and the person uh, just said, "Why do you do what you do?" Mm-hmm. And I um, looked at her and I said, "Well, I don't know. Why doesn't everybody do this? Like, it just seems sort of like common sense." And then I thought about it and thought, "Well, actually, no. It probably has to do with my growing up in a house that was so impacted." Um, by a, a trauma that was never spoken about. And yet, um, despite that lack of um, articulation, it was, you know, patently clear and permeated all, everything he did. And, and, and sort of, you know, um, definitely, you know, we had sort of secondary symptoms just from, you know, his way of being and acting in the world, um, having experienced that. So it made me very sensitive to the importance of a hearing people when they have uh, something to say, letting them speak, letting them feel believed, um, and how much that would be cathartic and helpful and 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 healing for someone who'd been through a, tra- a traumatic experience. So I just got the tie-in by what you just said. I just had this aha moment that what you were saying was, and was that that was something that happened that people some people don't believe, and how traumatic that is to someone when they don't believe it. I have had friends, uh, as I'm sure you have, and and why you tackled this issue uh, with rape, that uh, people don't believe them or uh, blame them in some way. Uh, But the the don't blame, uh, the part about not believing them, I think uh, they have shared with me is sometimes even harder than what happened is is having people not believe you. And uh, I can see the tie-in now. It, it seems like it, it makes sense. It, it feels like it's hard for you to talk about. Yeah, I don't yeah. like talking about it. Right, right. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, the reason he, 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 he went, when I once asked him why he didn't want to speak about it, he said that when he did first come out of the camps and, and, came, and you know, um, came to America after, after uh, being in a, a rehabilitation camp in Switzerland, um, uh, when he did try and tell people, he was met with disbelief, discomfort. People just kind of didn't, just wanted this topic to go away. And then he got the message, okay, this is something you don't share. And so that that's, then he just never spoke of it again. So I think that, yeah, um, having realized that late in life and experienced that throughout my life, I was very, very concerned and sort of in my the course of my work, very um, concerned about, you know, um, helping others who had stories tell their stories and, and understanding the importance of that act for them and for our culture. What a wonderful, positive thing you did with what happened in your own life, that you realized that you could be that mouthpiece through film. And I think film is such an important uh, medium to be able to educate people and make changes. I know some of your films have impacted legislation, and I'm sure you hope this current one does. And um, I, I had a guest on uh, a couple of weeks ago, Jeffrey Van Dyke, who actually works with people to uh, realize that uh, typically the challenges that we have in our life that we try to hide under the carpet are actually tied to our calling. And this is like a perfect oh, example yeah. of that, that you're, you're pulling these things that, that, that bothered you in your own life, your own family, and, and then you're, you're, you're using that for your calling, which is to give me people a mouthpiece. That, that's such a beautiful thing. It's such a great thing that you've done with those things that were hard and dark and, and difficult. Um, so what a positive thing that you're doing. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it, it must be rewarding to have uh, the women involved with the film and this entire project and uh, 
you know, seeing it on uh, the Oscars, having it win an Emmy, having all this attention put on it because of you, Amy. Be- no, it, it's really because of all because the of men the and women who spoke up. And, yeah, true. And, I mean that. I mean that, that. Those people are my heroes, and they I think they have the real courage. I mean, right. I'm. I was a conduit, and I'm yeah. really grateful to have been part of that experience. But, right. um, you know, I always really, and it's not. It's it's not. I really am sincere in saying it's it's it's. You know, we all owe them our our debt and our gratitude. You know, um, and I definitely agree with you. Um, but it was what I uh, was saying is exactly what you said is you were the conduit to that. And how wonderful that you gave them that platform to do that. Um, I can imagine that uh, having that opportunity w- was healing for them. Because the more we shed light on this uh, topic, the more we can make it start to go away in some capacity. Um, I know in your film it mentioned that the campus rapes are uh, – as high as like 20 percent something like that i mean it's a lot of students it's it's, it's between men and one and five and, and one and four the statistics right. all the studies show that that's not right. in dispute i mean if anyone has kids going away to college or whatever they should see this film it's really startling it's startling the number of people that it affects men and women i think people always tend to think it's just women but uh, you've shed light on that as well and um uh i think yeah, the film and uh, also the music video uh, are very pertinent to making people who have not experienced this uh, understand what it's like to be in those shoes. Yeah, that's I, I you know I appreciate your saying that. I would love everyone listening to know that it you know it is um, it's an important film to see. It does provide information that people just don't get anywhere. And I think the reason the you know the 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 the, uh, the public has been responding to it in the way it has is it it gives this first time view of a really empathic look at what this what this act really means you know people don't people think oh it's just sex it's just a bad hookup it's just miscommunication they don't really understand it as sort of the violent violation that it is I know. and they don't really understand the consequences that it has and um, not only is it a, a great film informatively for anyone in college going to college in high school and their parents to see but it also is a, a, a very moving film because it con- chronicles the student movement and it's a very positive and hopeful film so I want to make sure people know it's not just dark and I think people right. are responding to it because oh my gosh it not only tells us all this stuff but it's it, it's actually a really um enthralling I don't want to use entertaining but in a very engaging cinematic experience right I mean, it's a really well-crafted film right so I mean I think you know it succeeds on all those levels and so it is super super important for people to see well I mean it's award-winning film for a reason I know you are shortlisted for the Oscar and won the uh, the producers guild and, and so on and so forth so many awards because it is so moving and effective and you know, uh, there's not a lot of uh, films out on this topic, um, but this is one of the most powerful ones. Uh, and, and so uh, justly so, it's being applauded as such. Yeah. Um, I know your previous film also was about rape, which was uh, in uh, the military. And that film actually impacted like 35 pieces of legislation, yeah. which... I mean that. This is where I say you're just so using the uh, your gifts and your talent and your films to make a difference, and that's a beautiful thing. I mean, uh, I think people didn't realize how prevalent it was in the military, and uh, you've shed light on that as well. Um, sad but true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were shocked. I mean, um, but uh, no, that broke the story of the epidemic of rape in our military. And, and one thing I will say about also speaking up and the power of speaking up, it was because of Invisible War and the the veterans and the active duty soldiers that, that the former active duty soldiers that spoke in our film um, about what had happened to them that led to not only obviously legislation changing, but when the film came out, we showed it on campuses, and mm-hmm. it was the showing on campuses that led students to start speaking up about their assaults. So just the same way that the military sort of was our leaders and in integrate, most people don't know or remember that it was actually um, the U.S. military that led our society towards more integration. It was more integrated than the public at large, you know, and mm-hmm. sort of led the charge. Mm-hmm. In a way, we're seeing the same thing here where sexual assault, that movement was somewhat reborn or reignited by, you know, Invisible War and the soldiers speaking up about their experiences. Right, which was the name of the film. 
film. Right, The, the Invisible, Invisible War. War. Yeah, right. and you know, and and that's how Hunting Ground came about because when we went around on campuses showing it, students would come up and say, you know, actually that, that something extremely similar happened to me here, and so they started talking to us and sending us letters and saying, please make a film about campus assault. So I think that both the Invisible War, Hunting Ground, coupled with sort of all the Crosby women coming forward and finally, you know, being heard, coupled with that remarkable letter that um, the 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 victim of of Brock Turner, the Stanford rapist um wrote to the judge um the convicted rapist um uh, you know describing her experience which i think went on uh, you know we got to buzzfeed and it went viral i think uh, 27 if anyone listening has not read that letter go to it immediately it's at, it's it's hands down one of the most brilliant stunning uh, elegantly written um articulations of what it's like to be a victim of this kind of crime and it and uh, I think all those things combined have led to what we're now in this sea change you know mm -hmm. where suddenly you know people knew how to read you know Trump's uh you know the 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 the, the audio of, the, of that of his uh, the bus scene yeah the, the, the bus scene I mean the way that was received in society was thanks to all the groundwork of all those efforts right and the and the feminist movement right. and all the soldiers of all those people that's how come that sort of sparked and ignited the right rage it did because right. finally in our society we could register that as wait a minute that's not okay that's not okay yeah, yeah it's not locker room talk this is right. not okay this is like right. doing something to someone that they they didn't agree to right. and it's a violation and it's disrespect and it's so much more it's a crime uh so uh and, and i do say that that is one good thing that's come out of this crazy election is that i do feel like women <laughs> are rising up going oh no we are not standing for this anymore we demand respect and we are coming together as a whole to say we want respect for women in this country and around the world um, and so I think you're right that the, these things like your film have uh, raised awareness so that women have uh, realized, no, we're not going to stand for this. We're not going to stand to be paid less. We're not going to stand to not be promoted as uh, VPs and CEOs. Um, and so there's a big uh, there's a big culture change happening right now. And uh, your and film is helping to to move that. Is there some legislation that you'd like to see come out of this film like it did out of Yeah, the there's last something one? called CASA that um, Senator Gillibrand has a bipartisan committee trying to pass so I encourage everybody to go look that up and, and support it. That would be wonderful. It would more sort of do a national um, mandate uh, to all, all campuses to sort of do certain policy reforms that would really more effectively help them um, deal with sexual assaults when they occur. So yeah, that, that piece of legislation is great. But speaking of the sea change, um, you know, there still is going to be white noise and backlash, you know, and we're going to see that if we do elect our first female president. Um, but, you know, we are moving forward and it really is important that everybody speak up and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and say no more to this because the problem is, is that, you know, up until now, this kind of sexist behavior has been normalized and accepted and thought of as well, just, you know, the status quo or the way it has to be. And it doesn't. Right. You know, it's a social construct. Like, oh, that's just the way guys you know, are. But it, you know, yeah, that's no, not... that's something we've, you know, allowed to ignore, you know, just like we sort of started, um, not that, you know, we've got a long way to go with racism, but at least sort of discourse, derogatory discourse about different, you know, ethnic minorities right. has been called out and yeah. censured, rightfully right. so. And yet we sort of think that it's okay still to, to trash talk women. It's so bizarre, you know, right. and that, you know, and, and God forbid, if you say something, you're sort of, you know, PC, which is ridiculous, you know, no, actually, just right. sort of standing up for rights. Right. And then the other little thing I'll say, because I liked what you and Nicole were talking about, about empowerment, you know, I want people also, I'd love to sort of like reframe that we are powerful. Like everybody on the planet owes their life to a woman, period. That's damn powerful. Right, right. We need justice. Yeah. You know, we got plenty of power. Mm -hmm. We need that recognized mm -hmm. and fairly acknowledged. Right. And we need we need justice and respect. You know, right. that's that's, you know, thank you. I'm I'm powerful. Thank right. you very much. Yes. You know, <laughs> yes. but I need other things from you. And I think uh, for us, uh, empowering that power 
means uh, lifting more women into positions of influence, making them more CEOs, more decision makers. Right. And that will make the world a better place to have both views at the table. Each one brings something different to the table, a different perspective. Um, they, they've done research that shows that companies that have more women at the top are more profitable. And so it just makes more sense even oh, in no, business. It's, it's much better for business. Yeah. And did you see the recent New York Times article about um, women that worked in the in the Obama women that work in the Obama administration? No. Okay, it was awesome. They they were they realized that in meetings, um, when a woman said something, the conversation would just continue and no one noticed it, um, even if it was like a fabulous point. And so they decided, and they were like, "That's really strange," you know. And yet, if a man said something similar, like oh, it was recognized, acted upon, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so they decided they made they, they made a conscious effort that whenever a woman said anything, another woman sitting in the room would say. That was a great comment Catherine just made, and I want to just repeat it or, you know, add something to it. And it was called amplification, mm -hmm. and they noticed, like, it made such a difference. Wow. So, yes, amplify, empower, you know, um, definitely, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, help women's voices be heard. Right. You know? you know, through the years, the culture has been that women uh, – uh, many women, not all, but a lot of women uh, tend to uh, compete with other women uh, in a lot of uh, places in but the workplace. That, but look, that's, look, patriarchy knows no gender. Yeah. That's yeah. what I like to say. It's yeah. like, you know, when people go, oh, women are just as bad as men. It's like, patriarchy knows no gender. Everyone's been drinking the Kool-Aid. Yeah. Like, and the myth about women is, um, also, if you have, if the brass ring is 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 daddy or a male authority, everybody's got to pay the piper. So mm -hmm. women are as indoctrinated into this Yes. crappy ideology right as men so, like, so but it starts so, with us it so starts it, with us changing it and men yeah it, it, everybody oh, absolutely it starts with everybody we, changing it recognizing that saying who made these rules yes. We're not, you know they're You're not right. for us anymore that's right women and men so yeah. you know so i yeah so our women's empowerment movement i believe starts with women helping women but absolutely we have to have the men getting behind us as well because it won't happen without their support. And so they have to recognize that we are their uh, mothers, sisters, uh, daughters, and that they are gonna want to empower those people that they love. And, and uh, it starts with their own family. Um, so what is, what is next for you? Do you have something that you have your eye on? Uh, that well, we're thinking of doing um, a, a third uh, a film in the in the sort of assault arena because we've gotten mm -hmm. so much traction and right. attention and sort of made such a such a difference that we sort of want to double down on that and keep going. Um, so we're looking into something there, but right now we're on a, a project in a very different area that's going to be sort of another explosive expose. So that's kind of great, and that'll up. be coming out maybe next year. Or? Uh, st yeah, probably uh, 2018, early okay. 2018, is what I'm thinking. Well, yeah. we definitely look forward to that. Please keep doing the wonderful work that you're Thank doing. You. You're Thank you. You're making so much. a difference. You're definitely leaving a wonderful legacy. And, uh, you know, I just am so honored to have you on the show oh, today. Oh, that's so sweet. Well, and thank you. Appreciate and you. Appreciate yeah. your doing this. And, thank you know, you. Um, it's really important. All right. Well, we'll have you back when you do Great. your next project. Thank you. All okay. right. Thank you so much. Tune in next week, noon, at uh, UBN Studio here on iHeartRadio. Thank you for tuning in. Hugs and happiness. Do you want to have more passion and purpose in your day-to-day? -day? Are you yearning to ignite your power within? Now, more than ever, the world needs women who dream big, inspire others, and are living their greater purpose. There's never been a better time to up your game and make your success happen now. Contact Danny Rukin for a complimentary consultation and find out more about how you can become more effective, energized, and empowered while making a difference in doing what you love. Go to www.dannyrukin.com. The Live, Love, Thrive program is brought to you in part by Honda of downtown Los Angeles, supporting the equality and empowerment of women. The Live, Love, Thrive radio show is produced by 360karma.com. Are you a 360 Karma woman? If so, spread the word. Be sure to follow us on social media at 360 Karma Women on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please like us and share us with family and friends. This is the year of the woman, and we are stronger together. 
fans of the Live Love Thrive radio show, join us for our Live Love Thrive conference in Los Angeles on November 12th, 2016. This will be one of the most dynamic and interactive conferences in the country regarding equal pay and the shift of putting more women into positions of influence. Plus, incredible speakers, music, and life-changing tools to help you find your life purpose and create your legacy. Get your tickets now at www.livelovethriveconference.com 